Homey are winners of Reddit, what's the biggest thing you wish you would have known before you bought and moved into your first house? <laughs> Pay attention to the grade of the yard. Where is the water going to flow or pool if it rains? Water issues are the worst. <laughs> How much everything costs? Just general maintenance. Bills and mortgage are known and predictable, but then there's broken boilers, washing machines, fridges, paint, random tools, and all sorts of other stuff that just adds up really quickly. The cost of furnishing a house can get out of control. Close the doors to the rooms you don't use, get stuff used and in phases. You don't need to fill every room upon move in. Vintage furniture is often of a much higher quality than new. Curtains slash drapes slash blinds are expensive. Biggest life tip I can hand over, flush the goddamn toilet, if you're viewing a property. I didn't have much for a down payment at the time, so I got an FHA loan. I wish I would have known exactly how much mortgage insurance was going to cost me. It really adds up. It was like $80 more on each payment. In hindsight I would have saved for another year, and avoided watching all that money go down the drain. Right before I put in an offer on my house. My best friend told me to ask the seller if they will leave a refrigerator, washer, and dryer it never hurts to ask he told me that was over 10 years ago and I'm still using the fridge, washer, and dryer that was left by the seller. All three are still running strong, knock on wood, and it really helped me out because at the time I would have ended up buying really s asterisk asterisk tt wire appliances because I put all my money into the down payment. So like my buddy says. It never hurts to ask. I would have spent some time hanging out in the neighborhood to see what traffic, neighbors, and noise is like. We had some issues with the family across the street for a few years. Thought they were contractors working on that house when we bought ours, but turned out they lived there, and they were bonkers. Whether or not the first floor had any insulation in the walls. Spoiler, it didn't. Don't be afraid to back out of a sale at any point. Yes it's kind of s asterisk asterisk tty to the sellers and a little awkward. Losing the $1000 or so you spent on the inspection or appraisal can sting. None of that is as bad as being upside down on a house or feeling trapped in a house. If something feels off it's okay to walk away. Eater, be sure to check local laws. Looks like repercussions vary from state to state. After my mom bought her townhome I ventured into the crawl space to discover leaking hot water pipe had rusted through both top and bottom of underlying heated duct, the resulting moisture and heat making it desirable for the termite colony that had moved into the subfloor. This was just inside the crawl space access door in the garage, glaringly visible, but checked off on real estate inspection report. Always get a second inspection prior to closing. A house is all about angles. Some builders like soft rounded molding and corners, others are more sharp and flat. Why is this important? Well, cleaning, painting, hanging things, repair. Dust will sit on flat molding and it never seems to clean off. When fixing drywall, sometimes these angles matter. It seems like an odd thing to consider, but just look at that house and imagine painting it or cleaning it. Also open floor plans are just that, open. If you have kids, you hear everything. If you have roommates, you hear everything. Watching the big game. Someone washing dishes will interfere with that audio. To have an in general knowledge of what to look for when I walk through the house. There were a lot of small issues that gradually became bigger issues that I had to fix. Between all the personal stuff going on in my life and those issues I'm almost caught up and I've owned the house for 2 years now. Leaking valves, wiring issues, evidence that the sewer line had tree roots growing in it, random janky fixes, etc. And the previous home me are when I cleaned only where you can see, and didn't clean to the same standard of me. A good example of this is he would instead of sweeping stuff into a dustpan, and throwing the contents away, he would sweep it all under the fridge. I literally had to take a giant flathead screwdriver to the tile and scrape everything off, because the mess stuck to the ground due to spilled fluids. Also it's a good idea to check outlets for proper wiring. Previous home me are when a twisted copper and aluminum wires together and in one outlet the wire wasn't long enough so he used speaker wire to extend it. That the down payment and mortgage is the cheap part, not the end goal. 
in an apartment, you generally never spend more than rent, utilities, etc. When owning a house, mortgage is the bare minimum and the sky is the limit. That shared driveway suck, particularly when the house next door is being rented out and the landlord lives in another state. Make sure to specify in your offer that the home be in move-in condition and what the penalties are if it's not. We were relocating to a new city hundreds of miles away and didn't get to do a final walkthrough until the day before closing. The previous owners had left all kinds of junk behind that we had to deal with, not to mention the place was filthy. Since everything we owned was on the moving truck, which was arriving the next day we felt like we had no options but to proceed to the closing and deal with it ourselves. I've since learned that if you've got a good realtor, get a good realtor. You can protect yourself from this situation. The contract can specify that if the house is not in move-in condition to seller is responsible for one. Temporary housing two. Storage fees for your furniture, etc. And three. The cost of removing their crap and professionally cleaning the home. We were young. Yeah. And um. Yeah. But our realtor should have known enough to protect us from this situation. Did I mention find a good realtor? I wish I'd known how s asterisk asterisk tty hoas are. Sometimes there's no avoiding them, but in our case we thought we were doing well cause the hoa was working on land grading when we originally viewed the house. Little did we know it would be an uphill battle to get necessary improvements to our house, like replacing the 13 year old roof that we already had leaking problems with. We could have replaced it 3 years ago and had it paid for and not have to worry every time it rains. Go into the bathroom and turn on the shower and flush the toilet. Barely sufficient water pressure to pass a home inspection. Still kinda sucks in practice. The placement of the house on the property is very important. We bought a house on a corner lot. The house was not situated in the middle of the property, rather at the far back of the property. So we had the large property, which we wanted. But all of it was front yard. Virtually no backyard. And you can't put a swimming pool, or trampoline, or swing set in the front yard. In many states, your monthly mortgage payment may also include home insurance, taxes, and if you couldn't fork over 20% in cash, mortgage insurance. So even though you think you're going to finance a house for $1,900 a month, be ready for the other costs as well. Also, buy some toiletries before you move in. There's nothing worse than being halfway through your ceremonial break in the blumping business to find you've forgotten toilet paper. The fact that most of the plumbing had been done amateurly by the previous owner. The bathroom sink leaked into the fuse box in the cellar and the downstairs radiator doesn't work at all because the pipes were laid the wrong way around. Frankly, if they hadn't changed their phone numbers and conveniently forgotten to leave a forwarding address to the building so I'd have mind to take them to court for misrepresenting the property. Final walkthrough. We had been in the house so many times that when it came to the final walkthrough we didn't feel it was necessary. Unfortunately the previous owners bought a chihuahua sometime between after we made our offer and when they moved out. The entire first floor is hardwood but the finished basement is fully carpeted and that's where they kept their puppy while packing and moving. We called our realtor and he talked with us, but in the end there was nothing we could do. We have to recarpet the entire basement. Something that hasn't been mentioned here, but is very important. Wall texture. Make sure you like it, because if you don't, it's very expensive to change. We bought a house that was walls and ceilings skip trowel and crow's feet, neither of which we like. We got estimates to change to a flat, level 5. Finish and the price was between $15k and $25k for our 2600 square feet home, depending on the contractor. We kept the textures. If you're buying a historic home, be prepared to deal with 100 plus years of mystifying decorating decisions. 120 year old hardwood floors with 6 coats of paint on them, one of which is blood red? You bet. Gorgeous cabinetry with 6 coats of paint on them, one of which is blood red? Of course. Wonderfully ornate window trim with six coats of paint, one of which is blood red? Somehow, yes. Seriously, the interior of my house at one point was, floor to ceiling, blood red. How? Why? Who knows? 
Make sure there is an outlet in the bathroom. I didn't. I would say, don't buy a home that was redone by a fixer-upper or DIY person. They all suck and none of them know what they're doing. Make sure to like and subscribe for more daily content. Thanks for watching.